We are going to talk about a fabulous place to experience photography in the Bay Area called Pier 24. Why is it called that, Rob? What, why, where did they come up with that name? Well, they came up with that name because it actually is at Pier 24 yes. on the Embarcadero. And you can see it here in the picture uh, behind Rodney. Uh, you want to go full frame with that, Rodney? Oh, uh, yeah. Let me, I'll, I'll start. With the, I do want to actually give Nikki, I want to get Nikki uh, on here to officially kick us off okay. for, okay. for um, Community Living Campaign. So go ahead, Nikki. Okay. Thank you, Rodney. Hi, everybody. Happy Dia de San Valentin. It's St. Valentine's Day again. And we hope you're all having a wonderful day with your true love and your platonic friends and family and just enjoying enjoying how uh, the day is going. So we're doing another art viewing, Pier 24, which I'm excited about and anxious to hear. The first part was really fun, so um, this should be very good. The Community Living Campaign, for those of you that are not familiar with us, we're a nonprofit in San Francisco, and we support people with disabilities, and we support seniors. And we bring lots of programming uh, five or six days a week on Zoom. We have art programs, we have writing programs, um, we have instructional uh, inform, uh, information, information from your communities that's important to those two populations. So we really hope you check us out when I get, I'm almost in my house. When I get in my house, I'm going to put in the chat some information and our website. And we're just happy you're here. Thank you, Rodney. Take it away. Great. Thanks a lot, Nikki. Uh, so yeah, Pier 24, located at Pier 24, hence the name. And this is part two. So I, I feel like I should do a Previously on Pier 24, That's right. <laughs> we, we talked. I had uh, two other of my favorite museum guides, uh, Fred Gold, Fred Silverman, and Charlie Goldberg, talking about their favorite photography. But, but uh, Rob, why don't you get us started talking about just where this Pier? What's the story with Pier 24? How do you get there? How do you experience it? Yeah, yeah. Let me do that because some of you may not have been in our first part where we talked about this. So I'll. I'll go over it uh, now. So it is called Pier 24, as we talked about, because it's on on the Embarcadero in this beautiful setting. You can see it here, right under the right under the Bay Bridge, and uh, it's unusual because it is a privately owned public photography gallery. Uh, and on their website, they say it's a it's a a place to view uh, and think about photography, and it really is that. That's really the way it's set up. They really encourage you to do that. Um, and um, it opened in uh, 2010, and since then they've had about 11 exhibitions. They run their exhibitions for a long time, nine to nine months to 12 months. Uh, they keep them up for a long time, and and uh, uh, and that's partially because they only let a limited number of people in at a time, uh, and so they want you to, they want to have ample opportunity for people to see the, uh, the shows. The show that we're talking about today. Uh, is called Looking Back, and it celebrates the 10th anniversary of the of Pier 24. It was delayed a bit because of the pandemic, uh, and it, it's also it's a part one. There's going to be a part two. Uh, I believe the first part is going to close pretty soon, and then there'll be a a uh, uh, part two will open uh, at some <laughs> at some future date. So it's but, important to point out this is our part two about yeah, part one. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. A uh, slide, please, Rodney. So uh, here's the man that founded uh, Pier 24. His name is Andy Pallara. Uh, he doesn't look very nice here, but he is a very nice guy. Uh, actually, a very approachable guy. He's, he's also a native San Franciscan, and he's given a great gift to the city with, with Pier 24 because basically he built it to, to display his, his private, his personal photography collection, uh, which uh, he actually... Uh, got into uh, collecting photography quite late. He only started in 2003. Uh, he went and saw the, the Revelations exhibition at SF MoMA. That was a Dean Arbus retrospective, some of you might have seen. And uh, that is what inspired him to buy his first photograph. And that was a, a, a Dean Arbus a piece from her, from her untitled series. A slide. So Andy built uh, his collection very rapidly. <laughs> Uh, and today, the Polara collection exceeds 4,000 works. Uh, it has vintage and contemporary and modern photography with uh, international artists uh, represented that span the whole history of photography. 
He's also very interested in emerging artists, young artists, and he collects those uh, 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 in depth when he finds an artist that he's interested in. And he's a native San Franciscan, like myself. And uh, so he's interested in photography, that uh, the historical photography of San Francisco. So the, the collection also reflects that slide. Uh, it's a very large space, as I mentioned, and uh, uh, when you're in there, you sometimes kind of feel like you're, it's a private gallery because you may not see another soul. Uh, they only let in a certain number of people at a time. Uh, the viewing is free. Uh, you go on their website and you make a reservation and uh, uh, it's a two hour viewing window. Now they have been closed for a few weeks because of the pandemic, but they are reopening. And so they are now taking reservations for the reopening. Uh, so if you're interested in going, it's a good time to uh, go on and, and grab, a, grab a spot. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll find it a very, uh, you know, very intriguing and, and interesting place to visit. I mentioned one thing which is quite interesting, which, which Rodney's going to talk about, and that is that, that uh, as you can, maybe can see here, none of the photographs have wall labels. Uh, so the idea is that Andy, Andy Pallara, the, uh, the collector, has this idea that he wants you to look at a photograph and just see it at face value. And just evaluate it. Do you like it? Do you not? What you know? What is it? Without being prejudiced, if you will, or by knowing that it's a an Arbus or an Ansel Adams or uh, Henri Cartier Bresson or whatever. In other words, he doesn't want you to be impressed with the name. He wants you. He wants you to look at the photograph and evaluate it. So, and then once you've done that, if you're interested in knowing more about it, there is a guidebook that'll that'll give you that information. So, with that, I'm going to turn it back to Rodney. He's going to talk uh, about a couple of pictures and then I'll come back and talk about a couple of more. Uh, I do want to mention when you go in, they have a booklet available. I'm holding it in my hand that gives you the whole floor plan. And then you can go to each of these pages and that's where you will get the title information and the names of the photographers who took the images that you're looking at. Right. So, so the, I highly recommend that. In fact, I took mine and I kind of marked it up for this show to like, here are the things that I really want to talk about. And so uh, I could take notes on it. So it's free and it's really nice. Uh, I think they're giving, they didn't used to do that. I think that's something they started doing for the pandemic. And uh, I believe that the day that they're reopening from the pan, this latest surge, uh, the Omicron is tomorrow. So um, uh -huh. probably it'd be too late to get a reservation for tomorrow, but pretty nice that it's back available for us to visit. Yeah. So I'm going to show you one of the very first galleries you go into, and it's a very large gallery, has lots of pictures of people's faces. And, you know, you were, these days we're used to seeing lots of faces that look like mine do right now with the, the mask. And I don't know if this was their intention or not, but I wonder if the, the idea of showing us so many of these faces, and it's, they actually call the, um, the room about face, could be, you know, for for people that uh, have uh, have not seen a lot of faces, to um, to give us like a chance to engage with people's faces again. And so I'm going to show you a bunch of um, these portraits, and ask you some questions about them to consider. So this is um, this week, This is a, a portrait. This and you see like two pictures of the same guy. I think we got some, we got to take care of some of you might be introducing some noise. I think I got, got them. Hold on a second. I'm trying to get somebody muted. So give me a second for that. Um, and yeah, if you, if you do unmute, try to be careful about that. Uh, in, unless I'm, unless you're being called on to speak, but looking at this portrait of this man, what, what, any idea who he might be and um, like, how is the photographer portraying this person that we're seeing. What are your thoughts on that? Either you can type it in the chat or you can, um, uh, you can unmute. I don't think we have too many people. So go ahead and unmute. Um, Sherry is asking, is it a self-portrait? I like that question, Sherry. Any, any, what, what makes you think it might be a self-portrait? I'm not exactly sure, but it, it's so real. It feels like the photographer really knows his subject. Ah, uh, you, so uh, you get, it feels very real. You feel like the photographer really knows his subject. What, what, why do you think he might know the subject well? 
it's really hard to pinpoint, but it's more, it's, <laughs> I don't know if somebody else would want his picture taken like that, but uh -huh. I don't know why not. There's other, other gorgeous pictures like that. Um, yeah, why, why wouldn't you want your picture taken like that? But, there, there's really no good reason other than, you know, wrinkled, older, but really beautiful. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I yeah, really he is, can't pinpoint it. So you're noticing this guy's really wrinkled, um, really interesting skin tones, right? Uh, he, I he noticed looks like- con, He looks content though too, which is great. He looks comfortable with himself. He looks comfortable with himself. Those are great thoughts. Paco, I see you have your hand raised. Go ahead. You know what? That man looks like he's a very slim. Very and slim. Very dignified. Slim Sorry. and dignified. I, I, I think that's a very interesting comment. Nikki says, is he a model? Hmm. Yes, model, literally. Hmm. Well, <laughs> I love, that's a great comment. The funny thing about that comment is that the photographer is very famous for working with models. In fact, he might be one of the most famous portrait photographers in, um, in history. Uh, but this guy is not a model. I'll show you the title. So Clarence Lippard, Drifter, Interstate 80, Sparks, Nevada. And then he has the actual date. So um, this is now from almost uh, 40 years ago. So that's that's kind of fun. And uh, Manu, Manu, you say he has lived. Tell us, Manu, tell us more about that, that comment. He has lived. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I probably shouldn't say too much because I know this photo and, and, yeah. and, the, and the photographer, but, but um, so I know a little bit what's behind, but, but you can see that, you know, there's, there's experience and there's, there's a lot of lot behind in the, in this man's life i think just just from his look and the way he's looking at the camera i think as well you know manu you're a lot like me like when i know something i know i know this photograph i know the circumstances of it i still really want to hear like the the thoughts of those who are seeing it for the first time and yeah. um we got some of that earlier which is really great and yeah i think that's there's a good you know it's still like just a very interesting image of, of, a, of a man I you know he's a drifter and he's wearing you know, he's wearing a sports jacket and um, you know that, I think that's an interesting thing uh, Rodney I just I wanted just to, to pipe up for a second and pipe whatever the word is pipe you know pipe up yeah <laughs> and, please do I, Rob I, I think Sherry I think you're on to something when you said you know that uh, uh, the photographer knows the person because that really is how Avedon worked you know he had this amazing ability to connect with his subjects and uh, through various techniques. And uh, uh, I, I, I don't know how long he spent with this particular man, but yeah, I think you see that, you know, he really, these are very special, the way, he, the way he's able to capture that sense. Yeah, if I go up to somebody, um, some drifter on Interstate 80 and say, hey, I wanna take your picture. I'm not gonna get this, this picture. Like there was, there had to have been some um, engagement in, in trust. Yeah. That's what makes him a great portrait photographer. Yeah. You know, Sarah, Sarah asked the question, like, why is the top of his head cut off? Any, any, do you, Rob, any thought or anybody else thoughts on why Abaddon chose to do that? Is it actually cut off? Or is it, are we seeing the whole picture? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. There's something it, it, to me defiant. This is Lorna defiant about his posture and also something I'm going to say dishonest about his wearing a sports jacket and a clean white shirt. Uh -huh. It's almost like Avedon, now that I know it's Avedon, is making some kind of statement about the fakeness of models. And I see Valerie, you have your hand up. Go ahead, Valerie. I think that it's very debonair. And I think that this man was successful once and fell on hard times. Just the way he's dressed, the white shirt, the, the top button undone. Um, there's something very debonair about it so you get a whole narrative you like you you're starting to like imagine this guy had a life he yeah. was he was successful what, what we would call successful and but now he's at another place and um but he might have you been know. a drinker you know he just it, there, but there's such a especially in the second photo to the right there's something very debonair about it even his <clears throat> yeah the way he's got his hand on his hip uh, Mark, I see you have your hand up. Go ahead, Mark. 
Yeah, you know, the one thing about Abaddon, he, he often would chop off parts of people's bodies in his, po- in his, in his photography. Um, I'm not sure if that's because, he, you know, sometimes you see, you see it in fashion magazine, you know, the cover of fashion magazine, sometimes, you know, top of people's heads are cut off. And, but that was something he kind of did. It. I'd say, I've seen it in his pictures before. And it kind of gives a kind of gives like a looming feel to it. If it's done a certain way. So, so it, it changes the mood of it or it changes the, the feel of it. Is that, is that what you're saying by, by, by doing well, that? He, it's an interesting choice. Yeah, especially if it's just like a, if it's just a headshot. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, headshots are pretty, they're, for the most part, if you get a professional headshot, they're kind of boring. But if you look at actors and, uh, and their headshots, they're often a little more, um, I don't know what you're going to call it, um, interesting, I guess is the word. So, so maybe that's a, that's a great comment about this whole room because I'm going to show you some more. There's all these different portraits and it really headshot, mostly headshots. And, um, and, and yet these photographers have managed to make them all, in my opinion, really interesting. So let me move on to some, other, some of the other images. Um, here's another one. And um, I don't know, I was just really drawn to this picture. Uh, I could tell you why that is. Um, and I was really trying, I thought, well, maybe this is someone I should know. But what do you guys think? What's your reaction to this, this picture of this man? It looks like a it box. It looks like ISIS. Oh, uh, first person, go ahead, speak up. And then it looks like next. a politician to me. Oh, okay, it looks like a politician. What do you see that makes you say that? Yeah, I say the that. tie and the hat. Tie in the hat. So he looks very kind of proper and um, like he's packaged himself kind of perfectly for what kind of politician is he, by the way? He's running for something. Publican. <laughs> Republican, <laughs> yes. You don't, you don't think this is like a Democrat, huh? No, it could be. It depends on the year. Texas. Yeah, it depends on the year. This is a great, that's a great comment. Um, Paco, what, what are your thoughts? He looks like an activist, actually. An me. activist. What do you yeah. think he? What do you think he's uh, pushing for as an activist? What do you think he like wants? Like running for like a president. He's running for president. Or like an officer. All right. Um, and I really love Nikki's comments too about the politician, like being a mayor. And the man who says he looks like an oil man. Ron yes. says he reminds me of Roy Rogers. That's really I'll nice. tell you, you know what I thought? I thought he might be a country and Western singer. Um, and, and if he was a country and Western singer, a really good one. So it's funny, like we all, oh, and then yeah, um, go ahead, Valerie, what are your thoughts? I think he's a Texas rancher. Texas rancher. And here's the thing, um, we're not going to get to find out. I, I, we, I don't, I, we don't find out what he does we just have our own little stories from this this one picture and and and, and like what do you think the photographer thinks of this guy do we have any sense of does the photographer you know if he is a politician do you think the photographer is going to vote for him i see some some head nodding in the audience yeah so it's a it's a positive go ahead nikki it's a positive view of him i think right that's what I was going to say. Yeah, they, he put him in a good in a good light, so as if he is supportive of him. He might be the kind of guy. Maybe I don't agree with him, but I'd still be interested in hearing what he has to say. Hmm. I think <laughs> <laughs> you never know these days, right? Rob, do you have any thoughts on this? I I don't. I mean, uh, I, I, I it's not a picture that I'm particularly drawn to. I think everything that's been said, I agree with, but I don't have a strong feeling about it. So. Which is which is the one another great thing about Pier Twenty Four is um, this. There's about sixty photographs in this room, and, and what we did was um, you know we we went around as guides and, and just like picked out the ones we liked, and it's just kind of fun that, that we you don't all have to agree on the same one. So this it's called Untitled. So like again, we don't really find out who this guy is. It's William Eggleston. And from uh, someone was saying like, what year is it from? Nineteen seventy three. But it could be from, it could be from, you know, if you didn't know that, it could be a more recent, <coughs> right? It, it's kind of timeless. Yeah, it's a classic dress. Yeah, classic style. Uh, let's, let's look at another. So, um, okay, totally um, very different photograph. Uh, what are you noticing about this person and how they're portrayed? 
Oh, I want to go back to, there was a comment, John Wayne wannabe. Yeah, yeah, I think that, that guy probably likes John Wayne movies. <laughs> <laughs> so any thoughts on um, what are we seeing here? How are we seeing this person? Yeah, so this is very staged, obviously. I mean, there's a lot that's gone into the, the design of this photograph. So very um, staged. Uh, so they, they've, you know, we've got a person, but we also have clothing around them. And it's very carefully, like they, they spent time. So, so the subject of this must have worked closely with the photographer. Would you say that, Rob? Yes, I would say so. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's a very, uh, yeah, it's a very intentional uh, image. Other almost, thoughts? It's almost like a, it's almost like a fashion piece, you know, that would be, that would have a, uh, you know, uh, a whole uh, design team behind creating what goes on, what goes into the frame, you know, stylists and all that. It's quite a, quite, quite elaborate, I think, when you look at it. Yeah. A man who says built to draw you to the eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those eyes really, really pop. Yeah. Other thoughts? You know, it looks I, like a fashion lady, Rodney. It looks like a, say it again, Paco. Pa, say it again, it Paco. It really looks like, once again, it really looks like a fashion lady. A fashion <laughs> lady. So you get a yeah. sense of it being a woman and in, in, in fashion's an important part of this. Also, I, I have to say, I really love the skin tones and it reminds me of um, a lot of discussion lately about photography and black skin and how um, some of the um, films were were not designed to portray black skin particularly well, and that was also a, a criticism of some of the more recent camera um, phone cameras. Um, but that an effort's been made to um, to address that. Yeah, and there's this, a good good there's a good comment there about shades of blackness. Uh, I think that's what they're referring to. Oh yeah, something. Lorna, study yeah. of shades of blackness. Yeah. And Ron says, great lighting and tonality, especially in the clothing. So this photographer, this was interesting. Um, I'm not going to, I did not research the pronunciation of the name, but I'll take a stab at it. Zanel Muholi um, is a South African photographer who uh, is uh, in the LGBTQ community in, in actually photograph subjects from the community to show kind of people that are marginalized in South Africa and um, kind of kind of bring visibility and respect to those people. Um, and it's called Best Your Three and her mother, I'm sorry, their mother, I've got to get pronouns as they, their, um, their mother is named Bester, but this may be another family member. So I think it's someone they're related to. Interesting to me that it's Southwest Philadelphia because I spent time in Philadelphia, and the photographer did too. Uh, it, it had a, some kind of fellowship there. And just in um, researching the photographer, I found here's another image that they did. Uh, it is another person from the LGBTQ community. And just like, you know, talk about fashion photography, like this is just a fascinating picture. And we are, and this is, by the way, this is not at Pier 24 but just something that, um, you know, going through their other images, I, I was struck by. And, and okay, here's, here's a, um, like say a now for something completely different. <laughs> Another <laughs> portrait of somebody. How is this person being portrayed? Um, what do we think is going on here? And again, this is one of, like I said, like 60 different photographs in this room. And one of the ones for, for some reason, I was drawn to this. Does anybody recognize who this is? Yeah, what, and then, let me ask this question. What do you think the relationship is between the um, photographer and the subject? Um, so you guys can think about that, but Mark, I see you have your hand raised. Go ahead and unmute. Yeah, I think, is this Robert Frank? 
Um, kind of close, all right? I, Rob, would you consider that a pretty close guess? It's not Robert Frank, but it's somebody. Is it Freelander? The same circles with him, right? Yeah, yeah. you got it. You got it. Freelander. Yeah, Freelander. Yeah, okay. You so got it. Yeah. So it's yeah. Lee Freelander, and yeah. the relationship between yeah. the photographer and the subject is he he is both. This is a self portrait. If you were doing a self portrait, is this is this how you would uh? You, <laughs> Why do you think he did this? What What do you think um, motivated him to portray himself in this way? <laughs> Lorna says, um, "I look like a voyeur looking at it," and Cherry says he looks depressed. He doesn't look. He's definitely not smiling. He looks pretty. Um, yeah, I guess he could be depressed. He He didn't know that. Um, maybe this is before he became. Uh, pretty celebrated as a photographer. Is that is that true, Rob? Well, I don't know the date on this, but but you know when when you know it's Friedlander, then then if you know his work, you know that that he did lots of self portraits. He loved doing self portraits, and they're all they're all odd. You know, I mean, this just fits in with the genre of of other. If we if we were to show you others, I think there are some others in the show. But he just loved doing self portraits. He, he did them his whole life. He's still alive, I believe. And, yes. uh, yeah, and uh, it, always very interesting and creative. How he came up with this particular one, I have no idea. I assume he was sitting there one day, it was hot, and his, it was his shirt off, and he said, gee, maybe I'll take my picture. It might, may, might make an interesting self-portrait. I don't know, you know. I don't, I don't know how he got the idea for it, but uh, it's de definitely it, it fits into the, the whole uh, Friedlander style of self-portraits. Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned, I, I actually lived in, I went to college in Philadelphia in our house was, um, we did not have an air conditioner. It does get really hot in the summer. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, I, I think that could have actually been me back then. A um, couple of great thought, great comments in chat. Um, Ethel says, he looks like he could be mentally unbalanced or <laughs> hung over. Again, evoking my college experience in Philadelphia. I, I think I was a little bit of both back then. Um, Pamela says, it's a great shot. So why not shoot yourself that way? I love it. Hey Pamela, I would love to hear more about that. Why do you th why do you love the fact that this is a self portrait? Hi. Um, Not to put you on the spot, but I, I love yeah, comments yeah. like that. No, it's a good question. It's just it's the kind of photography that I really like, and that sometimes I've been known to take. I have a vaguely similar self portrait. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just love the whole the whole thing, and it's a it's a different way of photographing people than what we often see. It's really real. It's really real, and you think like like Ron says it's it's an early selfie, and we think about the selfies, and the selfies kind of sometimes aren't so real, right? They're us trying to like put our, our the best okay. spin we can on ourselves. <laughs> And Friedlander, he's he's not interested in that. Sherry has her hand up. Go ahead, Sherry. I'm looking, well, a couple of things. I really love the lighting, but the thing that interests me a lot are his hands because he also looks, um, oh. could look a little angry. And I, when I saw his mean? hands were closed, I wondered if it was a tight fist and the right hand looks a little tighter, but they're not tight, but they're not also not open because he does have his fingers folded in. And I don't know what it means, but I think it has something to do with his mood. So interesting portrayal of the hands, mm -hmm. I guess. So Rob, just technically, you think he probably would have had a timer on his camera and he would he would set the camera and then yeah. go back to the chair. Right. I would assume so. Yeah. Yeah. Or a cable release. But I think at this point he'd have a, he'd have a timer. Sure. By 65, he'd have a timer. Exactly, because that because uh, that's an interesting thing. He had he would have had to use his hands to to set that up, but maybe right. Maybe would the timer be inadequate? You know, give him a, a fair amount of time, or yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, in those days, I think a timer was a you know an external device that you screwed onto the shutter. So, uh, you know, it probably had more variabil variability than the ones we have today. But uh, uh, but the whole idea then, of course, of setting setting yourself in front of the lens and not knowing what you're getting. This is not a digital camera, don't forget. It's a film camera. So he didn't know what he got until you know he developed it and he may have may have made several photographs. I know we have to move on, but I, just, I want to make one one comment about it. You know, I, I love collecting 
vernacular photography, uh, anonymous photography. And one of the things you see a lot of in snapshots, if you look at snapshots, is young kids, boys, teenage boys, photographing themselves shirtless in the, in a mirror, right? <laughs> it's this idea of they want to see their body, you know, their developing body, and they're proud of it, you know? Now, I don't, I'm not sure that there's any of that going on here, but uh, it's, that is something that you see all the time with snapshots. It's this idea, is that, you know, of, of a, uh, wanting someone wanting to to you know it's a sort of um what a exhibitionism in a way you know a private exhibitionism although this is not so private of course because it's a it's a photograph that he published but well anyway. if it was if it was used in a personal ad I, I'd wonder what sort of person would respond <laughs> yeah. to it all right let's see uh, I I think I've got one more and then I I'm I really I'm supposed to turn it over to Rob um, shortly but. Um, one, one more picture, and uh, what do you think is going on in this one? It's so interesting how much we can tell just by looking at someone's face. And, and, and again, okay, so Manu, you, Manu, uh, yeah. in chat, you have you have nailed it. It is a, 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 a well-known musician. Go ahead, Manu. I, love, uh, I mean, I, I, love, I love the photos of Nick Cave. Because he's he's always got such a facial expressions that that are just unique to him, I think, and and just and, and it, it links to his music as well. The way all these the songs are are weird and 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 dark, and just it just works so well together. I, I love his I love his face. So, do you think we should give? I mean, we, this was taken by a different a photographer. Whose name we'll reveal in a second, but should we give some credit to Nick Cave for just the way he poses? Oh yeah, I think it, it's, it's a big part of the image. He, he knows he knows how to get this this this, this intense this intensity in in his face. I think it's it's a big part. I'm 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 sure I'm sure there's there's a lot of uh, interaction between the photographer and, and him. I'm sure it's a it's a dialogue, but still, I, I know that he's. He, he he knows he knows his face. Uh, uh, those are great comments, and this is this is one of the joys of um, like Pier Twenty Four is going with others and in, in here like learning from their perspective. And so thanks for that, man. I um, I do I think you know I just just was just very struck by this image, and then um, you know yeah you guys are mentioning the the focus on both the hands and the face and the intensity of it. And um, this great portrayal, uh, Nick Cave by Richard Learoyd in, in not that long ago, 2014. So, you know what, I'm gonna move on to you, Rob, because Rob, you, you are kind of the great expert in, um, you know, one of our great photography presenters, if you ask, if you ask me. So I, I had some more Richard Avedon pictures that um, really struck me. So if you, you want to learn more about Richard Avedon or really experience his photography, you'll see some of these great pictures there. But I'm going to move on to you, Rob. And um, first, I want to introduce you to say, Rob, has this is a return to uh, um, Art Viewing Adventures and that you um, have your own gallery uh, and are a fellow, fellow guide at the San Francisco Unnamed Museum of Art with me. Anything we should add to that, Rob? Oh, are you frozen? Rob may have been, Rob may be frozen for some reason. Um, so we'll see what, so if that's the case, let's go back and maybe we will take a look at some of these Richard Avedon pictures until we get Rob back. So here is, um, so here he's showing us Truman Capote. I'm just curious, like, what do you, what do you think, uh, what, what is Avedon telling us about Truman Capote and what is Truman Capote telling us about himself in this picture? Androgynous. <laughs> so we see like, he's really androgynous. He- um, Probably yeah. he's actually drunk too. He's like probably he like actually drunk. Now. Well, he did do a lot of drinking. I don't know, Taka, do you really get a sense of that from this picture? Oh, yes. Like, you know, he was like sleeping. He looks, yeah, it's interesting. Like, you know, 
Like, what, why does Truman Capote pose with his eyes closed? That's kind of an interesting choice, isn't it? Yes, Rodney. Oh, go ahead, Peter and Kevin. He looks like an amputee, the way it's just the, well, the twisted arm the is arms. twisted. Yeah, yeah, you only see one arm. Um, go ahead, Valerie. I just think that he's thinking he's a beautiful boy. He thinks he's a beautiful boy. He's so you you see like a sense of um, would it be accurate to say you see a sense of pride he takes in the way he looks? Absolutely. And uh, I see and a, a, sometimes I see he looks like arrested too. Right. Arrested, he might uh, hopefully not. Uh, a H Hochberg. What's A H stand for? Oh, you know I'm Marsha. For some oh, reason, it's, I, it's identifying as my husband. Sorry. Um, Marsha. <laughs> I'm Marsha. I'll have to change that. Um, you know, when I look at this, it, clearly he's posing. And and the fact that he doesn't want to look at the camera is significant. I think he wants to be gazed upon, but not be reminded at what's happening. And when you put your arms behind your back, aren't you, you're either offering yourself up or you're showing no threat. Um, you know, there's nothing aggressive. So it's it's definitely an affected pose for some purpose, either his or the photographer's is all I can say. So yeah, a lot of really interesting things to, that we can do with this image, right? Like like um, you know, he, he, he you say he's trying to look non-threatening. I, I don't I don't know. It's interesting because to me, um, Truman Capote kind of was pretty threatening <laughs> in some ways. Um, he was a very interesting character. How was he threatening? Forgive me. Uh, just as a as a writer, I think he could be pretty. Um, oh, brutal, through his right? words, yes. Yeah. Okay. Like, well, that was thing. He was disarming, wasn't he? And this is him being disarming. And uh, um, you know, you you know, he like uh, that's in cold blood. They show him interviewing the um, the murderer, and the murderer trusts him, and he, and he kind of betrays that trust. So, so <laughs> David, dreamy. Oh. Um, I'm going to take a couple more comments, and I want to move on to Rob, who is back with us. Rob, are you Rob, are you able to unmute and all that, or is he having? Maybe he's having internet problems. Um, but, but go ahead, uh, Jane. Uh, just he looks dreamy, like he's in a dreamy state. Yeah, there is something dreamy. Oh, that's I like that uh, shutter <laughs> shutter action. Go ahead, Manu. Yeah, to, to me, he's putting some distance between the viewer and, and himself. It's kind of closing his eyes and putting a putting this barrier in, in a way. That's that's how I uh, I see it. Putting distance. That's interesting. Putting distance between the viewer and himself. And for a writer, that would make a lot of sense. That you know, usually as a writer, you you do your thing and you put it out there, and then it all happens outside of your view. And um, I yeah, very interesting. Yeah, my chat said, look, he just looks relaxed and dreamy. Looks relaxed, dreamy. Um, looks like a Roman statue, I see, angelic. I think um, he looks a little seductive. He looks seductive. Well, he's certainly known for being seductive. You know, he looks of, available. He looks available. He is saying, come, he, come feel my, you know, taste my throat or whatever. It's know. like he's saying, take me. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's just like so many he dimensions. He looks like open-minded, Rodney. He looks open-minded. <laughs> so a lot of things we can do with this this image. Um, let me see. Uh, Rod Rodney, can you hear me? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm good. Back, I'm back on now. Good. Well, Rob, I did want to turn it over to you. So why don't we move on to your slides? Thanks for these great comments on this one. And again, you're going to see lots of these great images if you go to wow. Pier 24, which we can now do. So, okay, Rob. Yes, the internet so, failed just at the moment you, you were coming to me. It's very, very good timing. Okay, well, okay. So um, we're gonna look at uh, uh, some, some different uh, type of uh, work uh, in, my, in my half. And as you, those of you who know me know that I um, am a sort of a traditionalist in terms of photography. I love black and white, uh, uh, vintage prints, et cetera. Uh, so first slide, please. Um, Rodney? Can you see, I've got, uh, I've got uh, your first slide showing. Okay, I can't see them, so. Um, uh, That's I'm unusual not, for her. 
Yeah. So uh, change your view. Yeah, I'm on my phone, so I don't even know how the thing works. I'm okay, so we've got we've got yeah, your anyway. first uh, yeah, that's fine. Arbus. Yeah, I'm doing the phone because because the, the internet went down. Okay, so anyway, so yeah, this is the Arbus, uh, and um, so first of all, what do you see here? I mean, what's what's going on? Waiting. Eating. Waiting. <laughs> Waiting. 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 Okay. Uh, smoking. I uh, Rob. Okay. Um, we've got a okay. comment from Lorna, Edward Hopper. How funny you should say that slide. It's like Hopper. <laughs> Night there's, Night there's Edward Hopper. <laughs> so uh, that, that, that's exactly the reaction I had uh, with the, uh, the, the famous Hopper painting. It really conjures that up for me as well. Um, for me, I have to say, it's just interesting that she's not engaging us. She's looking away. She's kind of lost in her own thoughts. And, uh, you know, that she, you know, I don't think she's unaware of the photographer, but she's not paying much attention to the photographer. Yeah. Other thoughts. Oh, uh, Marcia says postprandial cigarette, perhaps after a bender. <laughs> uh, well, another you know. another reco <laughs> person recovering from a hangover. <laughs> well, you know, the, I guess the other question that we should ask about, about Arbus is, what do you feel here? Because really her work is all about, you know, eliciting feelings. What, what feeling do you, do you think, uh, what do you get from this? Loneliness. Yeah. Yeah, loneliness, yeah, yeah. yeah. And deep in thought, right? <laughs> Something's bothering her. Yeah. But this woman has an edge. Look at that sharp profile. Mm. Look at the declarative cigarette. Um, she's framed by other geometrics in the chairs and the windows and the paneling. This was a moment to celebrate her, even though to celebrate the unusual. She didn't look like a Vogue model, but in fact, she had a terrible haircut. <laughs> yeah. I see uh, Valerie yeah. has her hand raised. Yeah. Go ahead, Valerie. She feels very isolated. Probably just yeah. the very fact that she took the last seat close to the wall to be away from the oh. that's, that's a very interesting comment. Yeah. D d uh, did we show the, the hopper yet? We did. Um, okay. Like yeah. That. Yeah. No, that's fine. I mean, cause it, this, because it, ties in with, with the loneliness and so on. Uh, go to the next slide, please, with the quote. Uh, this is a, uh, a famous quote from, from Arbus, uh, well-known. A, photo a photograph is a secret about a secret. The more it tells you, the less you know. So what do you, th what do you think she means by this? And how might that apply to this picture that we're talking about? It's intriguing. It's an intriguing uh, quote, I think. Secret about a secret. Yeah. What is first, that? First of all, it's a great quote. I, I, yeah. <laughs> it's a famous quote from her. Yeah. So <laughs> what, some thoughts out there. I already told Rob what I thought. I want to hear what you guys think. Well, with no expression, it's hard to imagine what she's thinking or feeling. Yeah, we all we all have this narrative, and we've heard some interesting yeah. um, thoughts on that. Uh, so, so, so that's the secret that's being photographed. But why is the photograph? Why is it a secret about a secret? Why that that implies that the photograph itself is a secret, but that the subject is a secret that is this, you know we don't know about what the person is thinking. Oh, Marcia. Yeah, Marsha, Marsha has her hand raised. Go ahead, Marsha. For me. The reason the photograph is still a secret is because you have to read it. You have to take a minute ah. to try to be in her shoes or pay attention to the elements. So you have to decode that to then know about the subject. But then you realize you don't know much. That's about the best answer I've heard. That's really good. Well, well we, we haven't heard. That's Lorna has her hand. Let's hear some more. Let's hear some more. Yeah, Lorna. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's very interesting. It looks like she's drinking milk which we think of, at least we've been taught to think of as a healthy food, and she's smoking. So that's <laughs> a secret that reveals something of the complexity of her life. And even though there's a time stamp on it, what, it's 60s, I think you said, it has a timeless quality. Yeah. It's anyone, any place smoking alone. Yeah. It could be taken today, like uh, maybe her, her Valentine got her the wrong brand of chocolate or something. 
Yeah. Well, I, I, I want to move along since we lost some time here. So uh, let's go to the next slide, please. Uh, so this, uh, this, is a, uh, that, this is a photograph actually by Lee Friedlander, who we just were talking about. And what in the heck is going on here? Well, we, we can think about like, where is this? When is, when is it happening? Like, well, we know it's 1963. Well, yeah. What, what is but, like- But what, what, just what's happening? What are we looking at? Everyone's it, walking can anybody here. read it? Oh. There's a lot of motion, you know, people moving different directions at mm -hmm. you, coming at you, going left or going right. Mm -hmm. Disconnected. Disconnected. So these people, we see all these people, but they have no connection to one another. They don't, they don't they don't see each other most likely going go ahead go ahead sarah's noting the it's a revolving door and ron says revolving door is showing different kinds of people different kinds of people i like that um parallel universes says paul <laughs> yeah that's they, that's a good one yeah yeah reminds me of cortez so why, why, is, that, why is that yeah why is that uh, the stark angles and contrast. Hmm. Well, you know, it's interesting. This actually is the cover image of the little booklet uh, that Rodney showed you, the little booklet that they pass out. Uh, interestingly, that, that interesting that they had used this on the cover uh, slide. Here, here's, a, here's a quote from Friedlander, which I think is interesting. He says, I'm not a premeditative photographer. You don't have to go out looking for pictures. The material is generous. You go out and the pictures are staring at you. So this is a wonderful example of that, I think, where he's just seeing an opportunity and, and photographs this um, uh, slide. So that's very interesting that, that the two, these two pictures I showed you are hung side, side by side uh, in, the, in the Pier 24 show, which begs the question, did the curator see some relationship uh, between these two pictures. A slide. So, it, so here they are blown up and let's see what that might be. Is there, is, there a, uh, is there a compare, a contrast? Is there a conversation going on here? What do you think? See, Pamela says city life. Sure. They're both urban images. Uh, Jane says isolation. Lots of vertical, line, vertical lines and contrast of black and white going from one from one side to the other on both of them. And uh, the window and the inside, the outdoor, the, the inside. Great thought, uh, Manu. Thanks for that. Uh, Marsha. Oh, I just saw your hand. I'll lower your hand. And uh, Lorna, did you have your hand raised or is that just from before? Um, so, uh, and then I, um, go ahead, Valerie. The act of just being anonymous. So, so a lot of questions about who these people are. Are you still there, Rob? <laughs> I don't know, we might've lost me, Rodney. We might've lost like Rob again. Uh, picture on the left. Like in the airport, there's actually a revolving door. So, that so really it makes reminds me of this image. Too. But would it ever occur to you, Paco, that that revolving door would be an interesting place to take a photograph? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think like when when we had that quote, let me go, I'll go back to that quote. I do think we may have lost Rob again, but that's okay because we'll we'll just keep going until he comes back. But get back there, you know, um, you. You go out and the pictures are staring at you. Well, to me, like to, to see this, to see that this will work as a photograph, I think is really extraordinary. The reflections are important, Jane says. Subjects are disengaged with the photographer. People in their own worlds. Yeah, I think that's true. That's true for all these. And it's kind of all, I think this whole gallery is de devoted to kind of urban life. 
So it is like these are really urban pictures. Ron says people going about their business in a crowd, but not relating to each other. It's the, the revolving door. And maybe this woman also kind of in her own little space. And Sherry has a comment. And I think I'm back. Oh, good. Go ahead, <laughs> Sherry. Um, in the picture with the two people going through the door, what intrigues me a lot is the man in the background. He seems to be looking at them. He seems the way his head is turned to the sign. He seems more engaged than they are. I just find him interesting. Yeah, it's, I mean, in, in, but he has no idea. I mean, I don't know if any of them know they're being photographed, but he would certainly have no idea. <laughs> Great thought. I don't know. I, I'm sorry I missed the conversation on this, but I'm, I'm hopefully I won't. I won't We've go been away talking again. about how their yeah. their people are in isolation. Um, uh -huh. very urban okay. scenes. Um, Manu noted like the um, the lines, like the you know really interesting black and white images with um, very pronounced lines. Anything else? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. One one more comment, then let's let's move along. If this was a contemporary picture. Some of them would be on their smartphones, not paying attention to each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great, Even better. great. Observation rod. So <laughs> I'm on your smartphone is like <laughs> go ahead. So I'm on your picture that shows that one is by Lee Friedlander and the other is by Dan yes. Arbus. Okay, yeah. So we're gonna move on to the next uh, uh to the next slide in a second here. But uh, uh I wanted to mention to you first of all that both of these photographers uh were part of a uh, a landmark exhibition uh at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City called New Documents. And it was mounted in 1967 by uh, John Sarkowski, who is their rather legendary uh, uh, curator of photography. And the idea of the show was that he believed that uh, there was a new generation of documentary photographers uh, coming on the scene uh, and um, who had this sort of, um, they seemed to have a, a more casual sort of a snapshot aesthetic about what the way that they uh, uh, saw their subject matter. And we'll talk more about this uh, in a minute, but slide, please. I wanna go to show you these four pictures because uh, this, uh, this photographer, uh, Gary Winogrand, was the third photographer that was featured in, in that show, uh, in the, uh, in the new, new documents ex exhibition. And so I have close-ups of each of these. So Rodney, if you'll kind of go through them and so you can see what each of them looks like. Slide. Yep. Mm. So we're, we're on that crowd scene. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I can see the slides now. So yeah. go ahead. Slide, please. And slide. So it has a little bit of glass glare. I apologize for that. So these are all street scenes. He's a street photographer. <laughs> uh, that's what he was known as. Slide. And slide. So here's, here's Winnie Grant's quote. Photography is not about the thing photographed. It is about how that thing looks photographed. Slide. So here are the four photographs. How do you respond to that, that quote, the idea that it's not about the thing, it's about the way it looks? I think Robbie's challenging us because I think so many of us just look at, we look at a photograph and we say, this is, this is a, something torn from reality. This is, we are seeing something real. And, and he's making us realize, well, no, this is actually something, um, you know, the choices have been made to bring us this image and uh, you know, the photographers decided to show us an image and cropped it in a certain way. There could be things going on outside of the frame that we don't notice. That's, those are my thoughts. Other thoughts? Yeah. Other thoughts? Yeah. It's about, it's, let's, if I go back to that quote, about, yeah, it, about it's how, about how, how it looks photographed, not the thing being photographed. Think about think about the idea of, of, of the process of photography being this sort of a, a tube, if you will, 
and you've got the event and the event passes through this tube and at the other end it comes out as what it is, but it's modified by the tube. You know, the tube is the process of the photography, the framing, the moment of the ex exposure, uh, the way it's framed, the way it's printed, what's light, what's dark, all the, all the things that can be done to it uh, that, 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 that can, can emphasize one thing or another. Um, yeah, Ron, Ron is saying it makes you wonder about the relationship between the people or if there is a relationship, I think is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like we don't know how these people relate to one another. Did you, yeah. They're all just random people. You know, yeah. look at like the um, in the lower right hand corner, the man and the woman in the front. Are they a couple? Are they just happen to be near each other at that moment in time? He's about to pass her by. We don't we don't really know. We don't really know. And then they appear to be just it's interesting. They appear to be just you know snapshots taken on on the street. But uh, I, I, if you look deeper, there is there is more there. Uh, you know, Win Winogrand. Um, had this uh, he, he's he's he kind of was known for being this uh wonderful uh taking these wonderful sophisticated uh, uh chance observations if you will of daily life and you see that here it's sort of the moments uh but his his approach and his approach is lighthearted. you know it's not, not these are not heavy-handed uh, terrible things going on and yet there's there's here's an insight and i think you see that here um there's something going on here there's something happening here. Uh, he's trying to show you something, as Rodden said. Um, that's th that's what I'd like you to kind of see in these and and and, and comment on. We got we got a it? bunch of uh, hands raised. I see um, Menu. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, for me, the quote is uh, is kind of a challenge to the idea that photography can be objective. That you know, especially for street photography, you can just raise your camera, take a shot, and and make the someone can make the, the the argument that well this is reality or just a, a view of reality when really there's lots of choices that are made and when you take a when you take a photo yeah. and all the way to to how you present it and just the choice of black and white is is, is already a choice so right that's, right that's feel. yeah so many choices along the way that, that, that we don't even think about that that makes the final image yeah well 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 put um, Paco, I see you have your hand raised. Go ahead, Paco. Oh, that you know, this is the very, the most crowded people like in Manhattan too, like having a pro, like a protesting or a rally too, uh, relatively. Yeah, well, it's crowded. I don't know if they're all together for the same thing. It seems like they're all very different. I mean, um, it's it seems like a typical street in New York City to me. You know, it's just a crowd of people. Yep. Oh, oh, you know, bunch of people, unrelated. Waiting for the light to change. That's right. yeah. Or not. <laughs> As the case may be. Yeah. Uh, any um, Sherry? other comments? Yeah. <clears throat> Since photography is a moment, it's a, it's a slice in time, and you only get that. So there is always so much more going on than what, what you see. Mm -hmm. And... And you don't really know what's going on in someone's head, but you can make make assumptions and you may be totally wrong or totally right or part of it. And it's that's what's wonderful because you can you can think and think <laughs> anyway. Yes, again, again, it's a moment. And what happened the moment before? We don't know. And what happened the moment after? We don't know. And what happens outside of the frame? We don't know. Right, all of those things, you know. Uh, so that's what's so fascinating about it. You know, those are all the choices, you know, that were made. Um, Marcia, and then after Marcia, Roger, go ahead, Marcia. Um, I, I had feelings about each of these. I, I, I felt like the crowd was coming at me in the top right, and I could see that the feet was interesting in the. Uh, I'm sorry, top left and the other one, top right in that one. Right, there was a moment. I thought he sort of exploited the couple in the lower right, just this phenomenon of white and black short and not so short you know and then the fourth the lower left confuses me i don't see its merit although i read in chat someone said look there's two sets of plaid in there but it's a, it's a pleasing photograph to me just because of the shadows and the lines you know the, i think that's interesting but yeah yeah, yeah Mar marcia i think you said it, it i was reminded how pr prevalent plaids were in the 1970s with that shot 
<laughs> yeah. I don't. I haven't worn plaid in a while. It's true. <laughs> Let's do one more comment, and then I want to. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Roger. To wrap up, probably. Yeah, he he can show, especially with the two people, how close in proximity two people can be, or people can be to each other and have no interaction or no relationship, and it's make really it look like in that case where that maybe they did. Yeah. Again, the streets of New York, huh? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Valerie, why don't you go ahead? Yeah. I just had a sense in three of them that there was this great sense of rushing, rushing, rushing. And yet in the um, upper right one, this sense of a, a New York City street, a sidewalk devoid of people, no, no, no people in the street, and yet just the isolation of the two people in the middle of the city. Yeah, you know, Ron is saying, um, is that a Boston secretary, married couple, two strangers, tourists asking directions? Mm -hmm. Those are... <laughs> It's a great, it's a, it's yeah. a, we'll never know, right? Who, who knows? Upper East Side <laughs> with all the long um, awnings. And, and oh. they're well, and they're well dressed. So could, I would support that idea, Upper East Side. Yeah. I'm just yeah. fascinated by the architecture and the buildings that are no longer there in Manhattan, especially in the upper left. That's on Fifth Avenue. Uh, Rockefeller Center is on the left. I can see St. Patrick's Cathedral, Saks mm -hmm. Fifth Avenue, and the Besting Company, which is now the Olympic Tower. <clears throat> Way in the distance, you can see the GM Tower, F very faintly. But um, being an architect, that's all I'm looking at. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah. Well, it's a it's a document of you yes, know, of a different uh, time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we have to start to wrap up. I think. Do we have another five minutes or? Yeah, we, um, we probably we'll we'll go fight. A couple more minutes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, I hate to cut off these comments because they're, they're so wonderful. Are there any more, uh, Rodney, before we move on, or otherwise, I want to. I do want to tell think, you a little. I bit. think we're, let's let's keep going, Rob. Okay, good. I do. I wanted to tell you a little bit more about this about this uh, uh, this exhibition that, that these three photographers uh, were a part of. Here's here's the catalog for it, uh, and um, this new documents exhibition because it was a. Uh, Kind of very important. Um, it uh, it represented this 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 shift in the emphasis of documentary photography, uh, and up until then, uh, documentary photography. And I think I hope you know what I mean when I say documentary. It means what we've been looking at, the sort of shooting on the street, you know, the moment, uh, something that's not planned, as opposed to the the portraits that we saw in the first part of the program, which are you know very. Uh, premeditated, if you will, uh, images versus this is documentary photography, you're documenting something. So documentary photography up until this point um, had really been primarily a tool of, uh, of social reform. Photographers like to show what was wrong uh, in society or in a situation uh, as in, and uh, to create an, uh, an attempt to rectify it. What Sarkowski saw in, in, in these three photographers, uh, slide, when he mounted this show is, is this. He said, in the past decade, the new generation, this new generation of photographers has redirected the technique and aesthetic of documentary photography to more personal ends. This, to, their aim has been not to reform life, but to know it, not to persuade, but to understand. So this was the shift that he saw. And uh, uh, as we look back, I think you can see how that has played out in the three photographers that I showed you. Uh, as any clothes, like, any So as like as a, contrasted with like Dorothea Lange, um, Walker Evans, right? Right, yes, exactly. That were more purposeful and more about uh, social commentary. Uh, yeah, so any, any parting comments? We've got maybe one minute left, so. Yeah, when are we all going to go to Pier Twenty Four? <laughs> Open again, we, we yeah. Make, do that, make right? your reservations, yeah. They're all um, taken three months. Yeah, well, you have to you have to book on out, I guess. But I it's, uh, they've been they'll be they've been closed, so I guess they'll be busy now. They maybe it's uh, the know. way it works is it's um I think it's like a thirty day window, and is that right? There's a time when yeah. you can jump in and get yeah. more reservations. So but yeah. yeah, um, and and maybe we should yeah. figure out a way to to go together or something i don't know well it's well worth well worth doing so you know as you can try to get there yeah um but uh, yeah i really want to thank you thank you rob it's always great working with you and getting your 
deep knowledge of photography, which really extends my appreciation so much. Um, thank you. Thank you. Now, I, want, I, want to, I want to thank my internet uh, provider for cutting me off twice. Uh, that... <laughs> Let us know who it is so we will not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's no worries, Rob. We, we rolled with the punches, Rob. Yeah, we, had, yeah, we had really great yeah. comments from everybody. Well, we were waiting for you to get back on. Robert, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, great. Rob. Thank you so much. Thanks, we'll be, Rob. And we're going to see back. you all. Yeah. We're going to be back in two weeks. I'm going to be joined by um, Elvira Dale, who is a, an artist at the um, San Francisco Naval Shipyard. And we're going to talk a little bit about the um, kind of the, her art in the scene out there. They're going to have an open studios uh, in April that I, we're going to really encourage you guys to go visit. Um, but thanks. Thanks again. Um, thanks, Community Living Campaign for hosting us. And Nikki, why don't you tell us about what's coming next? Oh, okay. Thank you so much, Robert and Rodney. Tonight, in fact, in honor of um, Black American History Month, we're having uh, Richie do a presentation. I believe it's on uh, James Brown. So that should be very productive and very interesting. Uh, following this program at 2.30 is uh, Art with Elders and lots of other interesting uh, programming every every week. This is, you know, we have some really solid programs, including this one. And this one really prompted me to want to share a picture with you of that my dad's friend took. It's kind of from that same era. And this is my dad. I don't know if you can see him or not. Oh yeah. The handsome guy and the bald headed guy, who's also handsome, was his best friend. And it looked like they're doing union business at the old Foster's Freeze, uh, Foster's Coffee Shop on Van Ness mm. and Mark. And that's one of my favorite pictures of my dad. It's just so natural, them getting mm. together in the coffee shop because they worked up at the radio studios at the Fox Plaza. So I really enjoyed seeing these just, you know, pictures of people, you know, just in their natural setting, you know, pondering, you know, their lives and, I just thought it was very well done. Thank you so much. And I hope you keep joining us for these, especially these programs with Rodney in two weeks and the other um, CLC programming. And the other thing I want to mention is that please don't forget to vote. We care about children in San Francisco and their <laughs> families. This is a very important election. I know it's only one issue on the ballot, but it's an important one. So I hope people take the time to go out there and vote. Um, so thank you everybody so much.